right, everybody, welcome to the Unscripted Podcast one-on-one. And uh, special guest tonight, uh, Pastor Ken Murphy from Cypress Church here in, uh, I guess, are you guys, you're not Hilliard, right? You're Columbus? Or where? where is it? it it's interesting. We, we are a collection. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> our, our primary campus, the one that's kind of been around for almost 100 years uh, this year, is it's on Alton Darby Road. So it's about as far south as Hilliard uh, as you can get. It's really between really Broad Street and Fetter, right off of Alton Darby, but we yeah. have the four different locations, so we're kind of all over. Right, and that's, is that, it's still kind of Galloway, Columbus, Hilliard, somewhere in there, it's kind of in that pocket, right? Yeah, we have uh, one campus in Dublin, uh, off of Avery Road, and then one in Grove City, right off of Columbus Street, kind of on the main drag there, uh, London, Ohio, and then the Alton Darby, and then we're getting ready to launch our next two locations uh, in the next probably 12 months as well. Be wow. Marysville, and then uh, actually um, an Espanol uh, campus to reach the uh, Hispanic community, which is all around us as well. That's that's awesome. So, um, so, so, just to kind of go back through that again. Again, with me is 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 Pastor Ken Murphy um, from Cypress Church, and uh, I, I am truly honored and i mean that not just in this pot like i really mean that um i'm i'm a um and i was going to ask you i don't know if it's um theologically correct to say that i'm a fan of a church or a <laughs> pastor but but i'm a fan and i have been for a long time i have quite a few friends that, that uh, attend cyprus um i you know we've we visited several times my um my son i was today's his birthday he's 20 today to give you an idea um, he actually attended uh, preschool at Cypress for two wow. years. So, okay. yeah, so we've yeah. been around the, the church Absolutely. for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, turned 20 today. So that's that's hard to believe. But uh, I am a fan. I'm a fan of what you guys do. And that's kind of a weird thing that I have. I'm, I'm fans of other churches and what they do and um, always watching. And because and, I think we're in such a fascinating time and things are moving so fast. And um, so I, you know, nothing but massive respect for for your church and again truly honored that you would take time out of your schedule to come visit my little podcast so uh, i know man so I, 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 I appreciate the opportunity and love what you're doing and bringing more people and more conversations to the surface uh you know not just for the people of hilliard but and even central ohio but that's the beauty of technology right who knows how far this message uh and the messages and the stories that you are bringing to the surface can go to touch hearts, touch lives, encourage people. And I think it's awesome. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah. I'm, And that's it. That's the only goal I have. You know, I don't have any bigger goals than I just, I feel like everyone has a story, as you know, you, you know, especially in, in your role, you see these all the time. Some of them are heartbreaking. Some of them are, are amazing, you know, miraculous at times. And, and I think those need to be brought out, especially right where we are right now. We see so much negativity. Uh, and there's so many good stories out there and everybody's got one. So I feel like I won't ever run out of material. <laughs> it's just a matter of scheduling at this point. So oh, I'm um, sure I'm yeah. sure. So speaking of podcasts, do we want to start or end with yours? Cause I got a million questions in between. <laughs> uh, we'll end with mine. Let's start with you. All right. All right. So, um, and, and, uh, so the first question, um, what's it like leading a, now you said you have four campuses or five. Soon to be we five. have four four physical locations. It's okay. the old Derby campus, uh, Cypress Church, actually turned a hundred years old uh, this year, which is in church life and church organizations. Honestly, it's it's pretty rare to still be to have a vibrant influence in the community. Yeah, hundred years after you start. Um, I personally, our family, we moved to Hilliard and moved into Cypress twenty years ago. So it's funny, your son did preschool probably about the same time, you know, I kind of stepped into leadership over there. Yep. Um, and then over the past number of years, we launched a Dublin campus off of Avery Road, uh, the Grove City campus down on Columbus Street, and then our London campus. So there's four physical locations, a ton of people that engage in the ministry, which pretty much everybody has for the last, you know, six months online and then in small groups and things of that nature. And then our next two locations, um, literally hot off the press, but it's we're going to Marysville uh, and then the Cypress Espanol. And then there's another campus we're working on uh, for after that. Wow. 
So, and let's, you know, we talked about stories um, and I'm going to pause my questions for a second. We talked about stories. What's yours? What brought you to Columbus? I know you've got a family. Tell us a little bit about your family and what brought you here to Columbus. Yeah, it, um, my story, uh, the short version is I grew up in Northern Wisconsin, a small town called Eau Claire. It's about two hours straight east of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, my wife grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. So two very different worlds, yeah, small, absolutely. you know, Northern <laughs> Wisconsin kid and big city girl. Um, my dad was a pastor. Um, so for me personally, it's, uh, you know, the most important thing for me growing up was sports yeah. and having fun, hanging out with my friends. And I always kind of knew I was, I was, I felt a call or a purpose to help people or to serve people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a purpose for everyone's life and we're not truly fulfilled until we figure it out. Right. Uh, there's a number of different paths. I think, you know, I was kind of thinking about what that might look like and Ended up playing baseball, um, college uh, at Oral Roberts University uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, had a lot of great memories. Uh, it was actually three days from signing with the Philadelphia Phillies. Wow. We had the contracts all drawn up, everything was good, and I tore my shoulder uh, pitching against South Carolina. Hmm. And it was interesting. It was the first time in my life for me personally, I had to figure out what did I really believe and why did I believe it? Wow. Uh, Cause a lot of, in my growing up years, you just believe stuff just because I don't know, your parents do, you do. And, right. And then the second thing that really happened at that same time is my dad died my mm -hmm. junior year of college I'm and he had been ill my entire life. I was an only child. He had like 20 major operations, basically all the result of uh, kidneys. His mm -hmm. kidneys failed uh, when he was a young man. And uh, then, you know, failed transplants and then the steroids and everything, you know, back in the 70s and 80s technology wasn't anything what it is today. Sure. So really the two most important things in my life, baseball and my dad were kind of taken away within a, you know, a short time frame there. Wow. And that is also the school where I met my wife. Uh, she's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, Serena, uh, her degree is marketing communications. Uh, she's done communications ad agencies for hospitals, design build firms, all the rest. We met and it was safe for us to be friends because I was just there to play baseball. She was simply <laughs> there to finish up her, um, you know, her degree and kind of go lead a company. And lo and behold, we fell in love and went to graduate school in Kentucky for three years and went to our first church in Wisconsin. And when I was in graduate school, I did an internship at Cypress Church. Uh, okay. That would have been the summer of 90, uh, summer of 95, I believe it was. And the church was about 500 people at that time. And uh, it was, you know, the only church I knew of that was even kind of like what I kind of thought like it could be one day. Yeah. And great experience. We went to Wisconsin and uh, pastored our first church uh, of about 150 people and been that way for 150 years and, and an even smaller town uh, called Rice Lake, Wisconsin. And uh, good things happened. It was, it was learned a lot. My education really started after I got out of school and actually yeah. got, you know, kind of in the trench there. Yeah. And then we ended up planting a church uh, in that same small town and saw just incredible things uh, go from a dream with like six people to 500 people over the next two years. Wow. And that's when Cypress called and they said, hey, our pastor, you know, received a new position in organizational leadership for the whole movement of the church. Would you consider being our, our senior leader? And long story short, it was unanimous. We came and although we've been here li literally 20 years now, it, it's gone like that. Yeah. Uh, it's been a great place to live, raised. We have three boys. Our, our oldest, his birthday is actually tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jackson, he is, um, he's turns 24 wow. and uh, went away. He played basketball his freshman year, Indiana Wesleyan University. Uh, in Marion, Indiana, and met uh, an amazing girl who went to Davidson High School. Okay. Never met in high school, but they go three away, three hours away to school and, <laughs> and meet. And we love her. She's incredible. Uh, Olivia. And then our, our middle son, Mac, um, he graduated from Hilliard Bradley as well and uh, went through his own challenges with shoulder surgery, uh, not unlike myself. Yeah. Uh, with baseball, he, he is in his final year of mechanical engineering at okay. uh, Cedarville University. Yep. Crazy. And uh, recently got married as well uh, to a girl who graduated from Darby High School. No way. Uh, Bethany <laughs> used to be Alacusan. We absolutely adore her. Yeah. And uh, Mac is doing a co-op with Honda and absolutely loving it. Uh, so he's kind of well on that path. And then our youngest, Peyton, is in his junior year at Bradley. 
and uh, yeah, he's he's doing great. He enjoys sports and friends and just kind of hanging out and doing that deal. And so it's been good. So yeah, we've been here 20 years. I feel like I've pastored about eight different churches Yeah, over those 20 years, just I as bet. families change, organizations change. We have the daycare, the preschool, the Christian school through eighth grade, you know, now the four locations soon to be six and working on the seventh. So it's a, it's an amazing story of challenge and growth and more challenge and more blessing. And yeah, we absolutely love it. Well, I got to think the holidays are probably nice because it sounds like everybody's families are all close. So you're all in, in, in is even though it didn't sound like it was planned that way, they met their wives or spouses or girlfriends and they're all in Hilliard. So the holidays are probably really it, nice. It's either nice or they, they have to work twice as hard to, to make sure everyone's happy. So I don't know. Right. It's yeah. working out though. It's working out good. At least they can be in town. So when they Absolutely. come home, they're home for both of them, which is Absolutely. Cool. And I, I won't say that um, next uh, Thursday, we're headed to IWU for a recruiting visit with my daughter. So I won't really? say that because um, <laughs> she's actually headed to Mount Vernon tomorrow. Uh, she's She was, well, I don't wanna go too much into her. She, I'll let her tell her own story, but- What's what, for great. sport? What sport? Uh, her, she's a hurdler. So she's looked at okay. great. Um, and uh, tomorrow we're going to Mount Vernon where my son plays baseball. And awesome. then, uh, next week, she, it's funny. Um, she at one point said, I just want to stay in the crossroads league. And I told our financial planner that, and he literally laughed out loud. And he said, you know, I've heard of the big 10. I've heard of SEC. I don't know if I've ever had someone tell me they want to stay in the crossroads league. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, hey, whatever. I'm a, I'm a Mount Vernon grad myself. And so uh, it's oh, pretty awesome. special to, uh, to have my son. He actually just texted me before we got on. He, pitch today uh did well so um it, it's it's fun to uh to go back to that campus and i just wanted to go where the fit is you know and i'm sure you're the absolutely same as, as a dad i i really don't care what colors we wear and all those things um i, well, I, I think to be fit as a parent too what you're yeah. i mean not just the education you're you're really buying the environment and the culture and the values yeah that you want your son or your daughter to be immersed in yeah and the quality and the character of the leaders around them, mm -hmm. that's my goodness, as a parent, <laughs> we'll do whatever we need to do to get our kids into that best possible situation. Yeah, and I think, you know, I've said this on other podcasts too. I mean, we, we don't have to look any further than March to see that, um, you know, my son lost his baseball season, his freshman season due to COVID it was shut down. And so he didn't ever get to play. So are you still somewhere where, whether it's an injury, you know, like you said, or is it um, COVID or Lord only knows what's next? Uh, literally, Lord only knows yeah. what's next. Yeah. Um, are you somewhere where you can still grow as a human being, become a man after God's heart, all those things, find your potential spouse, find the guys that will stand next to you in your wedding. Th those are the things that are um, priorities, you know, and, and the sports is just like, oh, by the way, he also gets to play baseball. So, uh, and for him, it became so apparent that that's exactly where God was leading us. He was actually going to go somewhere else. Uh, we bought t-shirts, the whole deal. And then out of the, you know, kind of out of nowhere, this presented itself. And when we sat down and, and looked at it, it was like, there's, it couldn't be more clear that this is where you're supposed to go. And it's been perfect. So that's anyway, awesome. So, so we may have wanted, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, or she, she may end up in Indiana Wesley. So, do you know um, a guy named Justin Clary? I don't. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, he, he attends Cypress. He and his wife they actually own a local business doing really, really well. And um, he was a catcher for Mount Vernon when they went to the NAI World Series. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, great. Just a great guy. Great family. Great program great program and that's where i think a lot of people dismiss or don't look at the naia as you know there's some naia teams that could be could compete against d2 d3 easily oh uh, and, easily. and mount vernon baseball is is one that um you know i'm just proud he's happy and um you know i hope they do well obviously on the field but i'm i'm so thrilled he's happy off the field and so so yeah and that's birthday, awesome so. <laughs> so i could brag on my kids all night um, absolutely <laughs> as, as i'm sure you could as well so um all right so let's let's let me let me ask you a couple of maybe i don't know if there'll be tough questions and if any of them are like yeah I don't, you know feel free this is we're yeah. unscripted so yep um and again i didn't send you any templates so kind of Perfect. catching you maybe off guard what's it been like leading a church in the midst of a pandemic um, it's a great, great question. 
I'll probably have a better answer for you a year from now. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I think I would say part part of the answer is it's been, and it, and it sounds really weird to say it this way, but it's been so refreshing to be able to actually connect with people through technology. I told someone, I said, I felt like in our church, I mean, we'd run, you know, 4,500 people or so on a weekend. Um, and I said, please don't ever get enthralled with a number. That, that The only number that's significant is how many people are in the community that we have to love, you know, for Christ. That's, that's the real number. Yeah. But just because, and I said, you could go down to the horseshoe, you know, a year ago, it can be packed with 100,000 people, but it, it, some might call it a spiritual experience, but it doesn't mean that anything significant or transforming was happening. It was an emotional experience. Yes. Um, I said, over those first several months that our church was not gathering on the weekend, I actually felt our church was more connected and more on point hmm. than we had been for quite some time because we were so intentional to connect with everyone at a relational level, an emotional level, and a spiritual level. Hey, how can we pray for you? What do you need? How can we stand in the gap? Hmm. And I just think that's, you know, when you really boil it down about loving one another, loving God and loving our city, that is the church. Yeah. So it was actually, I think, you know, for a lot of people, it was really been hard, but it's also been an opportunity to kind of hit the recalibrate button. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the eighties, video games, arcade, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. you know, you know, yep. Xbox, if you're not going hit the reset button. And I think a lot of people, they hit the COVID forced you to hit the reset button Yeah. because your routines were completely destroyed. Yeah. So you, then you had to reevaluate where am I satisfied? Where am I not? What has my hope actually been based upon? Mm. Am I satisfied with that? So the actual contemplation, the ability to reflect, um, you know, I think we've all gone through, particularly those first few months where the house got, I don't care how big your house is, it got pretty small after a while. Yes. When you couldn't leave and, you know, little things became big things yeah. with relationships and, yeah. and all the rest. But in hindsight, uh, it's actually been a gift and, uh, you know, a pastor in a church, I mean, it's communication, 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 it's caring, um, and just making sure there's every opportunity for people to remain connected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, so I've got three, there are three questions leading a church in three different areas. So one yeah. was the pandemic. Next one is in the, um, and this may be a tough one, but in the current climate of the, and you've seen probably, or, or um, I've, I've had a few podcasts where I've, I've tackled some conversation, tough conversations with, yeah. um, you know, people of color that are, that are friends that, because I do believe that's the only way we're going to get this right is if we stop yelling and we start having conversations and we start to understand. And I think when I say we, I mean, um, as, as a white man, I need to start to understand the pain and I don't know that I ever will, but so what is it like leading a church in the current culture of racial tension that we're in? Great question. I'm glad you asked it. Uh, several months ago, I actually took a whole weekend and we talked about race relations and it's interesting because even when talking about COVID, if there's eight to 10,000 people who would call our church home, and again, you no church has that many on a weekend. Uh, who, how many ever call that home? Our average church attendance before COVID was 50%. So 40 to 50% of people show up on any given weekend. Uh, that's why Christmas Eve and Easter, they're often packed. It's not yeah. all these new people as much. Everybody just shows up on those two days. Yeah. So the responsibility list, you know, is large, even with COVID. I cannot describe for you the number of communications of the extremes on both ends of what people thought about related to COVID. Mm -hmm. And I can go and hit fast forward to the election. Uh, I can hit fast forward to pretty much any issue. There's a whole bunch of people in the middle and then you have the extremes, yeah. different viewpoints, race relations, the exact same thing. Yes. So what I try to do is to acknowledge everybody has an opinion and everyone is entitled to their opinion. I'm trying to take us on a journey of discovery to say, but what does the heart of God say about this? Mm -hmm. And let's just, let's open scripture. Let's talk to people, whatever decision you make, you're going to make your own decision on your own. 
Yeah. No one forces any other person to, to make any decision, but you're invited to investigate for yourself. Yeah. So when it comes to race relations, I mean, we're, we know, we're serving, we have partnerships in the inner city, the lowest academic, you know, education performing schools, city, uh, you know, Columbus city schools happens to be predominantly African-American. Um, so we're trying to serve in tangible ways, coat drive, food drive. Uh, we have education e-learning centers at a, a number of our campuses, even right now to help kids, you know, with yeah. e-learning and stuff like that. But then with the race relations, it was just getting to a point. I was like, I got to do something different. So I actually took a whole weekend, sat down with two friends of mine. Um, one I've known for a number of years. The other one is becoming a very dear friend quickly who attends Cyprus. One actually happens to be a police officer. The other one uh, is an engineer at Honda. And we just had a conversation. Yeah. And Jack and John and myself, it's online, cypresschurch.tv. And we talked about uh, racial profiling. We talked about, you know, as a white person, there are certain things in life I can say, well, I think, I, you know, I think I understand what you feel. But there are certain things, it's ins it would be insulting for me to say that because I have no idea. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, it, it can be like, oh, tell your wife when she's pregnant. Oh, I know what it must feel like, you know, labor pains. No, you have no idea. No clue. You're, right. you're, you are the husband. You're the man. Right. You don't know this. Yep. So it's, you can never, I think it almost like takes away from the other person's, the, the, the authenticity of their experience to say, I know how you feel, yeah. but yet we have to hear mm -hmm. one another and just have the conversation. And for me, I do happen to be a believer. I don't know that everyone who listens to your podcast is a believer or not, mm -hmm. but what I, what I believe to be true is everybody has some anchor point or some reference point that becomes their moral ground zero. Hmm. And everything in their life, they'll evaluate whether it's right or wrong based upon their kind of grid or their code. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, when I read scripture, because I follow Christ, and it says, you know, there's no Greek, there's no Jew, everyone's equal. Mm -hmm. Go back even historical context. It's not that complicated. For God so loved, next word, the world. Yeah. It wasn't God so loved people like me right. or people who vote like me. Right. Or people who look like me mm -hmm. or think like me. And I always said with Christianity, the easiest thing in the world is to love God. Why? Mm -hmm. He's perfect. He never lets you down. Yeah. The thing that complicates Christianity is other people. Absolutely. Um, and the thing that really complicates it is when I'm called to love other people the way God loved me, which was I didn't deserve it. I'm a right. sinner. I'm screwed up. And he wants me to love other people um, that don't even know him yet with the exact same kind of generous, all compassionate, sacrificing love that he loved me. So that's, that's, that's the call. That's the challenge. Yeah. Well, and that, that's really powerful. And there was a few things I, I took out of that. And one of the conversations I had um, earlier, this, I don't they're, they're all running together. I think it was last week was a friend of mine from high school. And we talked about that. I told him, I can't, I think, um, and I, I can't remember the quote, I need to look it up, but it was a quote that talked about how, you know, we, and, and when I say we, I mean, me as myself as a, as a white male, um, yeah. especially growing up in the eighties, you know, we, we liked Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan, and um, we loved a culture. Um, we wanted to wear the shoes and the gear and we wanted to, you know, we listened to music. But, and as I told him, just because I might listen to a Public Enemy album, you know, it's a, it a band that we, or a group that we yep. both like, just because I listen to a public ad, enemy album, it doesn't give me the right to say that I understand, like you said. And I think yeah. that's that's where we're kind of, there's a little bit of disconnect, I think, for us, is just because I like Kanye West or you name it, any yeah. you know, current cultural icon um, that, that is a person of color, that doesn't mean I understand. A lot of times, even the lyrics in their song, the pain, the, the frustration, like you said. And um, the other quote that I always come back to is uh it's a lyric actually it says we all talk a different language talking in defense and i think mm -hmm. that's where we are we're all talking a different language right now because we're all defending something which maybe leads me to my my third question for you well let me i want to say one more i want to say one ahead. more thing on the whole yeah, race thing yep. and this is for me personally um and again i grew up playing sports all through high school and into college and i really believe um my sports background 
my mentality is I don't care where you came from. I just right. want to play with the best kid. Yep. And when it comes time to take a shot, I just want whoever's the best shooter to have the ball in their hand. Yes. So I truly didn't see color or ethnicity in the culture that I personally grew up in. But here's the part that I felt like for me personally, like God was leaning into me recently. I really don't think that I have in any shape or form shown a prejudiceness towards people of different ethnicity. But the question I had to wrestle for myself, but have I done enough to be for people? Mm. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say, well, I'm not against you. Or I, you know, I'm not trying to make your life hard, or I'm not against you. And even to say, oh, I want to understand, is that enough? I, I think the answer is clearly no. Yeah. So then I have to be for people. Yes. Not just people of color, but you know, it could be economic uh, difference, ethnic ethnicity uh, difference, educational difference. Um, am I doing enough? Am I doing my part to create an equal playing field? Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to love everybody, but again, if you have the lowest performing academic school, don't just talk about it, go do something. Be about it. Yep. Be, a, be a difference maker, make a difference. So, yeah. And, and the other thing that, much like you said, um, that I told him, we grew up in the same town. It was a 60 40 split typically, and we're 50 50. We couldn't remember the exact split, but, you know, I so saw I, I grew and I said, Darren, we grew up in the same place. Like, I don't understand the world we live in today. Like, much like you said, I don't look at the world that way. But he said this, and it was very painful or, and powerful for me, was he said, we grew up in the same place, but not in the same way. Yeah. And, and it was like, wow. You know, because again, it, just because of our address or zip code, that, that didn't make it that I could experience, or as we said a few times now, understand the world that he has lived in. So, as you know, I, I that's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. I know I'm catching you off guard. No, I love it. <laughs> no softball. So <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> we're going. We're going. Well, these are, this is the re these are the real issues where people live, man. So what yeah. everyone's thinking about, we're confronted with it every day. Yeah, and as a leader of a of a you know a church that is um, again, as I said, very that I I very much respect. Um, I appreciate you taking and tackling these you know as they come. So uh, and we'll get all the links at the end because I want to make sure that we hit up you know yeah. everything or anybody hearing this can go and find where you have already. It's yeah, no, absolutely, some, that'd be great. Um, all right, last one, and I, and I think you kind of touched on it a little bit leading a church in a political climate that we're in. Um, how has that been? You know, it, it's, again, it's, here's, here's the great challenge, I think, and it could be politics, race, um, economics, anything. I believe there is a deficit, generally speaking, in culture and society, and it's this. I'm afraid, large in part, we've lost the ability to think and reason for ourselves. Mm. And a lot of times what happens is we look to other leaders in society or culture and say, well, what do they say and what do they think? And if enough people say it, then they begin, well, that surely must be true. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do at Cyprus is I don't tell anybody how to vote. I won't tell anybody, you know, what they should think mm -hmm. other than to say, let's again, what would the heart of God mm. have to say about this issue? What is the mind of God? And that's creating, go back to parenting. When my three kids were five, I didn't let them make the decision, what do they want for breakfast? Mm -hmm. Be Snicker bars and ice cream. I mean, it, right. you just as a parent, mm -hmm. good parenting is you make those decisions, but then what do you do? You begin to hand off the responsibility yeah. and teach them every decision has a consequence. Right. You are free to make yeah. whatever decision you want. Yeah. But every decision, what you're not free is to live void of the consequence oftentimes it's you know it's blessing um or something good or it's going to be something hard something painful yeah and oftentimes our choices don't automatically reveal that outcome sometimes it's again saving for retirement right you know you start in your 20s and retirement seems like a million years away yeah you get to be my age and you're like hello <laughs> yeah it's right i can there. see around that next corner mm -hmm. you know? so i always tell everybody in their 20s man start sooner start now start somewhere yeah so going back to politics i try to teach what is the what is scripture mm -hmm. then do your own diligence yeah and vote your conviction be a part of it be a difference maker but realize your hope is never going to be found 
in an earthly government or politicians. I go back to go back to scripture and Acts. Um, when was the church most robust? Uh, really, right out of the gate, when they were actually killing people for their belief hmm. that Jesus was the Christ. Yeah. And the thing that killed the church was probably a guy named, uh, or not killed it, but really put a damper on its growth, was a guy named Constantine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was about the, what, year 313, when he made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. Yes. At that point, what happened? Oh, everybody's a Christian. Yeah, of course I'm a Christian. Yeah. I love it when I meet people around town who don't know what I do. Yeah. They just, they just know me as a coach or a dad or, you know, whatever. Uh, washed up has been golfer. Um, <laughs> and eventually the conversation always comes up. Oh, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll actually say, ah, you know, I actually work with people and uh, do like a lot of life coaching or whatever. And then mm -hmm. eventually, oh, you're a pastor. Yeah. People who don't know me, I promise you nine times out of 10. Oh, I was confirmed in fifth grade. Or, or they always go back to, oh, I was brought up, you know, whatever. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's great. So how have the past, you know, 30 years of your life gone? Yeah. So to me, it's about teaching people to think biblically mm -hmm. and to process just like you would your kid. Because when kids go off to college, mom and dad are not there to make their decisions for them. Right. Amen. Um, <laughs> so you got to, you can't just be yes, no, yes, no. You have to be, hey, the answer I think is yes, but here's the reasons why. What do you think? Yeah. And again, at the end of the day, there has to be so much grace because there's a lot of things that don't matter. And the, you know, the whole political deal, um, you know, of course I have my own personal opinion and my personal conviction and belief. Uh, but every four years, we're going to do the same thing over again. Yeah. And whoever's in office that kind of where the pendulum shifts, mm -hmm. but I'm just thankful that the hope that I carry is not going to be determined upon the outcome of man's collective opinion. Yes. That is, that is frightening actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you think everybody's collective opinion is going to determine what happens. Um, but everybody probably thinks that. So anyway, yeah. that's, you know, when it comes to politics, I try to teach. We're here to love God. We're here to love people. We're all going to have different opinions. Some people like country music. Some people don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some people, like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that's an opinion. So let's be a part. Let's be involved. But when it comes down to what matters, loving God, loving one another, loving our city, even in the midst of some of our differences, to lead people closer to Christ, that's what matters most. Yeah. Great answer. Um, and, and again, I hope, I hope anybody that's hearing this, I, you know, and I, I've, I've told a few people, like, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about where these lands, because I think God will direct these podcasts to land where they need to. And I hope they land softly in those places and they're accepted, you know, to, for whatever that means for each person that hears it. Um, but I, there's a few things you said that I, I thought it, one of them is I've always kind of wrestled with that personally um, when it comes to faith and how we we've uh, we've adopted certain icons as ours, like Chick-fil-A. You know what I mean? And we all know that they have great print. And I'm not this is nothing about Chick-fil-A. It's the fact that we've much like you said, we, you know, Constantine, what he what, We've done that with Chick-fil-A and Hobby Lobby yeah. and some of these things, and we've made them these icons that I don't even think it's fair to Chick-fil-A just because they're not open on Sunday for, for their own principles. That doesn't make it ours that it's yeah. not, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's a whole nother podcast. Well, I think, I, but I'll give you our, for example, our church, we have not met for public worship gatherings since I think it was like March 7th. Yeah. So six wow. or seven months we haven't met. Now, the first time we are planning to reopen the doors uh, is coming up here in October, October 17th and 18th. Um, the data tells me that 30%, maybe 20 to 30% will actually regather in person. Everyone else is going to be online. Yeah. Um, but there are some people who thought I should never have closed or some people who thought I shouldn't open because it's a health risk. I mean, right. Big 10 football, local schools, e-learning yeah. in person, everybody has an opinion. Exactly. And eventually you have to look at the data, which is the evidence. I'm a big believer in leadership. It should always be we, yes. never me. Right. So the, what is the collective wisdom of your executive team or your, your core leaders? You always err to the side of caution and love mm -hmm. and then make your decision, keep your palms open and move forward. And let's trust God and see what happens. Yeah. So there's room for a lot of opinions in the church. There's room for a lot of different people, 
in the church because we're all guiding we're all coming back to uh, we say at cyprus we love everybody but we stand on an un, uh, an unwavering truth that sometimes makes us uncomfortable mm, truth so the truth. love is for everybody no matter where you are no matter what you've done no matter what you believe right but but christ is uncompromising his love was unrelenting and that's when it says you and john he came full of grace and truth mm -hmm. and you really right. got to have both of those to make to make the thing work yeah. uh, all truth no love that's harsh that's horrible right all grace no truth that's not loving either i mean if you love someone you're going to eventually share the truth with them right it's always their choice but yeah so that's kind of the how we do politics covid yeah. everything Awesome. And I, I, there was one other thing that you said that was funny to me because again, it's today's his birthday. So I guess I'm stuck, you know, with him and I'm, he's always, they're always on my mind. You know how it is. Your kids Absolutely. Are always on your mind. But uh, uh, I remember he was two, he turned two and my sister has four kids and um, she's down in Houston. So I, I called her and I cause he was hitting that terrible twos and he was only in it for uh, maybe a minute. It was quick. Yeah. Uh, but I remember I called her and I said, how in the world did you do this with four? <laughs> like, I don't know what to do right now. Cause again, we're first time parents. And she said, there's decisions and there's consequences. Yep. And that has been probably the biggest anchor in my parenting has been, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, but it seems to have worked was, as you said, I had to first make decisions and then consequences. And then for them, I love what you said, hand it off a little by little to where now he's at college and now it's, hey buddy, you know, you're making yeah. those decisions and you're going to have to live with the consequences. Even choosing his college was there's decisions and then there's consequences. You know, yep. we can go to this school or we can go to this one. You know, that, that was fantastic. That was, I hope and, people heard that. It was great. And that, te and that teaching is always under the umbrella of love. Yes. When Absolutely. I was growing up, there's, I, I mean, I made a lot of bad decisions and mm -hmm. I suffered the consequences. Right. There's times my parents would draw a line in the sand. I tested it. I stepped over it. My dad never failed to remind me. Yep, that's the line. I actually meant it when I said it. Now here's the consequence, which right. was never pleasant. Yeah. But there, I never questioned their love for me. Mm -hmm. And it was able to separate the behavior from the person. Yeah. And I just think that's so, that's so important. Because even in sports, I mean, you have shoulder surgery. Once you lose your ability to perform, yeah. you question often your self-worth, your self-identity. Mm. because maybe it was too wrapped up in my performance. Yeah. And man, I, I see we do it even as 40 year olds, 30 year olds and 50 year olds. Uh -huh. um, our worth is who you are. You've been created by God, loved by God. He's got a purpose for your life. And there's nothing you can do that will ever take that away. He is love is relentless. Yeah. Oh, it's this. This has been so good. Um, so good. Just even if it's just me and you talking and nobody else hears it. Thank you so much. Um, nah, I've really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. You got a couple more minutes? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to ask you one more, maybe tough question. And it's, it's just come to mind as we've been talking, which is why it's unscripted. What scares you the most right now? Uh, personally? Yes. Um, that is a really good question. I think part of what friends of mine asked me, they say, what, uh, how can I pray for you? Mm. And my answer is always the same. And it's not a flippant answer. It's a thought through answer. But then I, every time I think about it, it just drives my answer even more. I pray for wisdom every single day. Yeah. Because just being a man, uh, who's trying to be a great husband to my wife and I should know how many years we've been married. It's, uh, coming up on, uh, almost 30, I think it is now, um, 28, 29 years. Um, and being a dad and now having the opportunity to have two incredible daughters-in-law uh, join the family, being a pastor, uh, you know, of a congregation, school, daycare, preschool, you know, the whole deal. Uh, I feel a burden to carry the, this vision of what I believe God's put on my heart of what could be to reach as many people as possible that they can know and experience God. I mean, really know him, yeah. not just hear about him, but know him, find friends and freedom and discover the reason God made them and they can live it out and make a, make a difference in their life and really fulfill their God given purpose. And I just know every decision carries, uh, carries a lot of weight. Wow. And that's the, you know, as far as 
you know, what scares me, I don't know if it's scare as much as it is the, the burden of making sure uh, we don't mess this thing up. Right. Uh, my nature is never to coast. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to I want to enjoy, you know, the, the good things and the blessings, but I'm always looking what's the next mountain to climb? What's the next thing? This is good. Okay, how could it be better? Yeah, what's next? Yeah. And I don't want to I don't want to live my life as a dad, a husband, uh, a pastor, a leader, or a friend and look back over my shoulder and say, man, I wish I would have just blinked just a little bit more. Yeah. And it's easy to give that advice to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, again, your son, birthday, freshman year, lost baseball. It's it, dude, those three years will go by in a flash. Yes. Give it everything you have because there will come a day you'll be old and you won't be able to throw, run, hit like you can. Yeah. Enjoy it. He's a yeah. pitcher. Dude, have ev savor every moment. Yep. Um, because you, you want to live life with no regrets. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for me, it's, and in my position, it's not just me, but it's the influence of all of us to help them be a part of something special they never could by themselves. Yeah, that's a great answer. And it, I give you credit because that was out of left field. <laughs> that, 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 that one kind of came literally. Is, yeah, so I, no. You're off the hot seat. Now it's your turn. Tell me all about your new podcast because that, that was our original uh, connect point. Um, I want to hear all about your podcast. You're off the hot seat for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's good. You know, honestly, the podcast is the same thing you're trying to do. I, I'm just, I'm continuing the conversation. Uh, I've had people for years who have said, man, I wish you would just talk a little bit more about parenting and what were the challenges you, you went through, uh, finances, just personal finances, just how do we live with margin? I mean, one of the things COVID has taught, if you don't have margin, your stress levels through the roof. Yep. Uh, and that's organizations, business, personal, just a lot of things that I'm passionate. I, I really tried, I want to add value to people. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what we're trying to do at Cyprus through biblical principles, relationship with God, one another, uh, live out your purpose. And eventually, I guess I just got to the point where I was like, okay, I, I just, I think it's time. Um, and then I, you know, started talking to a few friends and I said, would you be willing for me to interview you? So mine's going to be interview format for the most part. Nice. Um, maybe they're a guest on the weekend. The first one is uh, actually my nephew, Davey Blackburn. Uh, his story was like a national story. Sadly, um, his wife, his pregnant wife was murdered um, from Indianapolis. He was a pastor yes, uh, three and a half that. years ago. I remember that. He's actually my nephew. And, yes. um, you know, I've had him over to Cyprus to share a little bit of his story and his journey and healing. And what got, he has actually started a ministry called Nothing is Wasted. And it's the journey from pain to purpose. Because mm. we all have pain. Every yeah. single one of us do. And we got to figure out how do I heal? Yeah. Um, you know, and you can't always move past stuff, but you can move forward from it. Yeah. Otherwise, we become prisoners to it. Um, I got, you know, just friends and finance. Um, I'm actually bringing my counselor on the podcast uh, later this month. Uh, I think everybody needs a coach. Yeah. Uh, if, if Tiger Woods still used a swing coach in the Sorry. heyday, I don't know why anybody would not <laughs> would say, I don't need a coach. 100%. So we all need those outside perspectives to kind of help us stay sharp in the areas of life that matter most. So yeah, it's called More with Murphy. Um, my wife, Serena, she's going to join me on a lot of them. Same exact form. It's just unscripted. Uh, we just sit down. I'll have a couple of questions in mind and then we'll see where the conversation leads us. Yeah. And my honest to goodness, hope and prayer is that anyone who might listen, which probably my mom will, if no one else does, mom, That's my mom, right. she'll be good for it. 100%. Yeah. But if anyone listens that they would say, you know what? I'm glad I listened to that. That either encouraged me or it made me say, oh, me too. I'm not the only one who struggled with that. Yep, yep. Um, and maybe it could add value and provide a pathway for their life to get better. Yeah. Because otherwise, I mean, why talk? Right. I mean, so it has to encourage people, help them realize they're not the only ones who struggle yeah. um, in different areas. And then most importantly, though, let's let's make this not just an emotional moment, but a transforming moment. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I believe that's not even just knowing the truth. It's actually doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so then I got to apply these principles to my life on a consistent basis where life actually begins to change. Yeah. Well, and that, that that's exactly what I've, 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 I've told a lot of people is, um, you know, I don't, I didn't feel like the world needed another podcast <laughs> when I started this. I, yeah. I was like, yeah. 
you know, the world doesn't need another one. There's a bazillion of them already and everybody's doing it. It's almost like blogging, you know, 10, 15 years ago, everybody yeah. had one. Um, and I had one and I just kind of like, it just got, you know, and I walked away from it and then this thing started. And so, um, but that was, you know, like you said, if, if nobody else hears it, our time tonight has been so blessing and rich and rich for me. I'm, uh, that was fantastic. Like it's been amazing for me to just sit down with people, hear their stories, um, and and just it's been food for my soul in a world right now that's so negative. Because uh, yeah. if nothing else, I haven't been on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram in the past forty five minutes, and that's probably a good thing. You know, nah, I hear you, man. I I'd much you. rather be fed with something like this. Um, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. So I'm gonna two things. One, open invitation from now on. Um, I, you are welcome here whenever you want to come on. I guarantee anybody that hears this is going to, is the same. Um, I, I just love the conversation and, and um, I always like learning from those that I respect so much. And so thank you for that. Um, second is links. Give me all the links because I'll put them all on the blog post. Yeah. But also for anybody listening or driving in their car, what, what are all your links? Yeah, I, you know, I, uh, first of all, Aaron, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Uh, again, it's, it's similar respect. I, I've heard your name. Uh, I don't stalk you, but I follow you, you know, and <laughs> I don't even know how that stuff works on Twitter, but I see I like either. certain names start popping up and they pop up more often, you know, it's artificial intelligence, whatever. Right. Um, but I really, you know, I appreciate what you're doing in the community yeah. to bring important conversations to the surface. Yeah. Thank you just awareness, learn. And, and I think one of the most important, I think social media, and anyway, that's a whole nother topic for whole the next time. Podcast. That's right. But, um, you know, I'll get you the links. Uh, I'll have, you know, cypresschurch.tv is our church website. And then uh, where my personal stuff's going to be housed, a lot of it outside of the teachings, a lot of teachings are at cypresschurch.tv, but is morewithmurphy.com. Okay. Uh, so it's more with murphy.com. The podcast is you can find it on Spotify. Uh, I think there's a YouTube channel uh, that's being made for it. Um, and then um, iTunes or, or wherever you get your podcast download. That's where it'll be more with Murphy. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I, and, and so and just to clarify too, you said that there was a series that you guys did on race is that that would be available at the church website, right? Yep, that's, uh, that's in the teaching archives. And uh, Actually, I'll have uh, I'll have our communications person pull it out and kind of put it in a special link so it'd be easy to find there. I did a series a couple of years ago called God Politics in the Church, Ooh. which people might find interesting as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, just kind of dove into what what does it mean to be a person of conviction and compassion? Yeah, and love and some other stuff. But anyway, yeah, it's great. The last thing I'll say because I thought of this and I forgot it while you while we were talking. I was in. Um, Wilmington, North Carolina at the beach at, uh, for vacation. We went and found this, I can't remember if it was coastal or coast church or you know something like that. Uh, it was a guest speaker that day and he, and, it, and he said something that just was so powerful to me and that he said, we gotta stop acting like God needs us to defend him. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, he, he, could pretty, he, he could pretty much handle it. Um, and, you know, Absolutely. But, but, and I thought of that while you were talking, it was just one more nugget that I wanted to get in there for somebody, because I, I think I even tweeted it like last week. Uh, and, and I don't know how that was received by people, but we do it. And his whole sermon was, it was a fantastic sermon. It was a lot about that, how we've, you know, we, we have acted in a certain way, like God needs us to defend him. Absolutely. Um, when he's doing just fine. Uh, and if anything, we're probably getting in the way, you know, and, and he, yeah. he's doing just fine. Uh, he doesn't need our, our help. <laughs> and, I, I find it's, it, it's far more persuasive to love people mm -hmm. closer and to an invest their own you know, investigation of who Christ is and if he's really real and if you could have a plan or a purpose for their life and to try to argue them into it. Yeah. And, uh, and you just, man, it's, it's, it truly is about loving people with grace and doing it in the spirit of truth. Yeah. What did Yancey say? No one ever became a Christian because they lost the argument. Isn't that, <laughs> I think that's yeah. what Philip Yancey said. Well, I think you, I think honestly, even in like relationships, you know, if, you know, my, my own wife, I mean, do I want to be right or do I want to be in a right relationship? Mm, and I think a lot of times we argue in even relationships we're close, we argue to be right. And maybe you are right. But if you damage the relationship, you actually lost at the end of the day. Wow. So it takes a lot of humility um, to kind of step aside, even if you still think you're right. Yeah. 
and that's just in the closest relationships of people we care about. So then add into whether it's a coworker or a neighbor, or a friend, just some random dude you meet, you know, around town. Yeah. Why do you think the best thing to do would be to argue with someone over their beliefs and particularly to do it over Twitter or Facebook or no, Instagram? I just, I just don't understand it yeah. personally. Um, that doesn't tend to help people. Yeah. Nobody ever wins a Twitter war. That's, that's, that's my, Oh, it's my, ridiculous. I tell our, yeah. our team all the time, guys, nobody ever wins a Twitter war. Don't like, just don't engage. Um, like yeah. you said, yeah, I can make a good decision. I can make a bad decision. It depends on which side you're looking at it. But I tell you, Absolutely. as a former pitcher, um, you just came in with that last little segment right there about relationship and you just closed the door. You just nailed it. You, you got the win, you got the save all in one. <laughs> that was, that was I awesome. Better go ice, I better go ice down there. <laughs> yeah, go, go run the, you know, run the polls. Absolutely. No, no, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I know I've said it quite a bit, but I mean it. Um, I, what a, what a rich time. I've really enjoyed my time. time. I've really yeah. enjoyed my time, Aaron. Really appreciate it. And again, you know, God's blessing to you as you continue to bring conversation to the service and uh, to the surface. And I pray it helps a whole bunch of people. Thanks for having me. And the same for you with your church, with all the topics we've discussed. There's a lot right now that uh, is a leader that you said wisdom, you know, so that's what I'll be praying for you most, but also praying for your church as we all navigate this time in our history that is unprecedented. So uh, God I bless it very much. Cyprus, God bless you, your family, and um, I'm sure we're into each other somewhere in Hilliard, but until then, open invitation, you're always welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Right. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.